Well, what's up, family? What's good? What's good? I'm back at it again. It's your boy, Urban Sports Google. Now, we're going to preview the second round in the Eastern Conference. Now, this is what we've been waiting for. This is exactly what we've been waiting for. The four best teams in the Eastern Conference, we all know who they are. Milwaukee, Toronto, Philadelphia, and Boston. All advanced. So, guess what? They're all playing each other. All four teams are playing each other. Sweet. We got Milwaukee against Boston. We got Toronto against Philly. Let me break down these series for y'all right here, right now. <clears throat> now, first, Milwaukee against Boston. The official truck. First, Milwaukee against Boston. I'm trying to factor in. Now, Celtics look good. All four of these teams, they took care of business. The Celtics look good against Indiana, a team that can't score. Celtics are a great defensive team playing against a team that can't score. The reason why I don't have faith in the Celtics at the beginning of the year, I picked the Celtics to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, makes it the NBA Finals. The reason why I don't have that faith now, and I don't have that faith now because the Celtics have not been consistent. They haven't been. And they've kind of, I like the way Gordon Haywood's looking. He's looking damn good. <clears throat> and they kind of seem like they are establishing what they wanted to do all year with Kyrie taking the lead and Tatum being that, being the sidekick. The problem that I'm seeing with Boston is in that Indiana series, they face no adversity. And Boston is not a consistent team, they have not been consistent. All fucking year. All year they have not been consistent. I'm supposed to believe now they're going to be consistent. Going against the most consistent team in the NBA. Not just the Eastern Conference, but in the NBA this year. Malcolm Brogdon more than likely may be back as well. That's another shooter. Another defender at the point guard spot. Now, gives me calls to pause and makes me pump my brakes a little bit is Boston can defend and as great as the Greek freak has been, I can't see him just flushing it on Al Horford all over the place like that. But the Greek freak is coming for blood. He's coming for blood this year. That team has been consistent. You see the difference between that the team that, when that was coached last year and the team that's being coached this year. <clears throat> and last but not least, Eric Bledsoe is going to have to redeem himself. Eric Bledsoe got his ass bust in last year's series. For this reason, I'm taking Milwaukee in six games. Milwaukee in six. I don't trust the Celtics to be that consistent to play at that level. And I think Milwaukee can match them at that level. Even when they're there. Taking Milwaukee. Now in the other series, Toronto and Philly. It's interesting about these, that series. You have two teams who are so much in win-now mode. Because you have... Two teams who put all their chips in. You know, Toronto got rid of DeMar DeRozan for Kawhi Leonard for series like this. You know, this is, this is why. We've seen in the regular season what Kawhi Leonard could do to Philadelphia, what he does to Ben Simmons. DeMar DeRozan can't do that. And, of course, what he could do on the other end. But in this series, to me, what's going to make or break them in this series for Philly? Philly has put their chips in. Last year, last year's Philly team had a whole bunch of shooters to go with Ben Simmons and his playmaking and MB's dominance. And when you took away Simmons, which is kind of easy to take away with, with a good defender, Boston did it last year. <laughs> Mm. Um, 
then you had a bunch of guys who were just shooters. So they made trades to get guys who aren't just good shooters, but guys who are scorers. Jimmy Butler is a scorer. Tobias Harris, not just a shooter, he's a scorer. So I think Embiid is going to get his, even though he has a much tougher challenge against Toronto because Gasol is nothing to fuck with. Ibaka is nothing to fuck with. But he's going to have a much tougher challenge. However, we've seen what Kawhi's done to Ben Simmons. I think Ben Simmons is going to have his handful. I don't expect a big series out of Ben Simmons. But when you take the ball out of his hands, where well, he's not going to be effective, the other scorers are going to have to get it done. And that's why I'm kind of leaning towards Toronto in this series. I'm leaning towards it. The only thing that gives makes me pause a little bit, Kyle Lowry. Kyle fucking Lowry is the only thing that makes me pause. Kyle Lowry shows up to play. Toronto wins in six games. Toronto will win this series in six games until Kyle Lowry comes to play. Kyle Lowry do his little punk ass shit that he normally does in the playoffs. <clears throat> then Philly will win. I think Embiid's gonna have some big games. Probably the course of six games. I think gonna have two have two really big games. The other four will be middle of the pack. But when Philly wins a game, you're gonna notice. No, pay attention to the numbers you see out of Butler and Tobias Harris, because I don't see Ben Simmons going off on fucking um Kawhi Leonard. If he does go off in any game, trust me, it will not be with Kawhi Leonard guarding him. That's not happening. Ain't no nigga who can't shoot gonna be going off on fucking Kawhi like that. That's not happening. Not happening. So, only way he's getting off if they can, if they get, find a way to get Kawhi off of him. But if Kawhi's guard him, he's in his back pocket. Butler, Tobias, they're going to have to get it done. And I like Pascal Sarr. He's my most improved player this year. He, if I had a vote, I'd give it to him for most improved player. I like their role players in Toronto, and they all defend. Philly doesn't always defend. So I'm taking Toronto by six. Six games. Let me hear what you thought. Let me hear what you feel. It's your boy, Urban Sports Google. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. I'm out. Salute.